Hey guys, this is Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today I'm going to cover two different things. Uh, one is about uh, the frame lock and how I fixed it with the uh, slight bit of lock rock. But before I get to that, some people didn't quite catch or aren't quite catching the difference between liner locks and frame locks, and I've got a great knife to demonstrate that with. Here's a knife that I was reviewing, or that I just got in, that I will be reviewing very soon. And this is a liner lock knife. So there's black G10 handle scales on here, and it's a liner lock. You flip it open, and it goes open, and you, know, you close it. Works just great. Lockup's awesome. But if you take the handle scales off, because these just unscrew and leave it intact, now you've got a frame lock. So a liner lock and a frame lock really are the same thing. You know, I can just keep on using this knife if I want to. <laughs> Still works, locks up properly, can use it any way I want to. It works like a totally functional knife, except it has no handle scales on it. So a frame lock and a liner lock really are the same thing, except for there's extra handle scales on the liner locks. And um, so some people were not quite understanding that. And so I'm just demonstrating that here. And now let me use this knife to show you the first part of how did I fix the lock rock on that other knife. Simply put, this frame lock arm, uh, let's get to the tabletop. Simply, the frame lock arm here wasn't pushing hard enough in. And so when that happens, what you have to do is you take the knife apart, you take this side off and you need to bend it just slightly right there. And so I'll show you a little bit of how you do that in just a second now. And then I will show you another way to attack it if you've got lock rock, even though the spring tension is somewhat strong already. Keep watching. So I'm going to demonstrate on a different knife because you got to hear this first warning. Don't do this unless you want to risk wrecking your knife permanently and forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> because you can easily wreck this thing. What I do is I uh, boil some water and I put it in boiling water just to bring this up to 100 degrees Celsius or close to it. Um, you don't want to heat it up too much. You know, it really depends on what you can handle to work with. And, and I wear some gloves, the thinnest I can, that give me some protection against heat, but still give me a sense of feeling. And what I do is I heat it up and I try to hold it right behind this point here. So that's where the relief cut is for the uh, frame lock. So there's a relief cut so that uh, that can turn into a spring. And if this arm, you know, if it just comes up to about here, when it's at rest, and it's just not very far this way, and you want it to be about where it is here. You want a space between the liner and the lock arm right there, or the frame lock and the lock arm. You want it to be able to go over and so that it's pushing all the way to the other liner here. If it doesn't push as far as the other liner, then it's not going to be putting enough force on to hold the lock. So once it's hot, you try to hold it whichever way you can and push on the frame lock. And uh, you can grab it with a couple of fingers and put your thumb in here and push on it as well. And you just push to train it. And then what I do once I've got it where I like it, I take some wood or whatever I can find and I stick it between there. Here I got something thick. And I push it between the uh, spring and the rest of the liner. So the lock arm and the liner, like that. And you have to give it more flex than it's going to rest at. And then I stick it in the freezer, preferably on some ice or maybe even directly into some ice water. Or even in this point, if it's cooled off a lot, then while it's like this, I put it back in the hot water and I let it sit in the boiling hot water for, you know, 10, 15 minutes. It helps to let the steel, you know, relax a little bit. And then I put it into ice water, leaving this in here. And I let it cool off in the ice water. And then once it's all the way cold, I take this back out and I pull this back off. And hopefully it's been trained further that way 
than it was before. And this one, I think that space there is a little bit bigger than it was before. And what you want to do is you want to do it in small increments. You don't want to try to go for a huge change. It's going to snap right here or it's going to break or whatever. I've broken a couple small knives that way. Um, here's one of my little necklace knives. And I had one that had the same problem. I didn't have a lock rock. What I had was it, the liner, the frame lock was so soft and putting hardly any pressure there at all that I could just push on the spine of the blade here and it would sometimes initiate closure. That's dangerous. So retraining that, I tried on this little one. I had to use tiny little pliers. And since the handles or the frames, I should say, were titanium, titanium is a whole lot softer than steel. It just cracked right in half there. So if you're doing this suggestion with titanium, be super, super careful. If you're doing this thing that I just suggested with steel, stainless steel, be very, very careful. So super, super careful with titanium and very, very careful. Oops, there it goes. And very, very careful with stainless steel and less is usually enough. So just do a little bit, put the knife back together, test. If it's not enough, do that process again. And as I said, only do this if you're willing to risk your knife breaking right there and being totally useless. Now, if that doesn't work, sometimes what the issue is, is that this frame arm interface, this side that interfaces with the blade, that's uh, here, that's this face right here. What you can do is take some of it down using a file Put a couple layers of duct tape or at least one layer of duct tape over this side so you don't scratch it up over the, the rest of the handle scale and protect it and you want to take it down and generally the way to find where the matching point is where the blade and the frame lock come together you put uh tape not tape you put uh, a sharpie or a, some indelible marker you rub it all across the face here if you can't see it already on the knife where it's interfacing with the lock arm. If it's interfacing, let me turn around here. This is hard to do because I can't see what I'm doing. I can only see through the lens here of the camera. I mean, I can to see the LCD. Um, if it's rubbing down here, that's probably why you got rock lock. Lock rock. <laughs> I hope I get that wrong. You want it to lock up fairly high on that arm. So if you turn it this way, you don't want it to be locking up right here. You want it to be locking up close to the top of this frame arm interface, the lock arm interface. So what you do to get that to happen is you file down like this, some of the metal and you file it away from the bottom and take away some of the steel. Don't do it all the way across, just a little bit on this bottom half. So you do it on that angle, not that extreme of an angle, but you do it on that angle, maybe maybe that extreme of an angle, and you take away a little bit of metal and you test it. Take away a little bit more, test it. Take away a little bit more, test it. Many, many steps, small steps is what I mean, and many as an M-A-N-Y as well, as well. Let me show you on video exactly what I mean. So I'm going to try to solve that lock rock issue with this talisman. The thing is, I paid almost full price for this knife uh, because uh, Tuya Knives was telling me that their lowest price knives are being sold almost at cost. Uh, and that's because small company, uh, their first runs were, you know, small amounts and that costs much more per knife when you're just making a few and when you're just starting out and things. So I paid a fair bit for this. <laughs> So I'm taking a big risk when I'm trying to edit this, uh, change this. The big thing to know about when you're going to be doing changes on, on folding knives is a little bit is a lot. A small change is a big change. So you want to make really small changes. So what I'm going to do is I've rigged this up so I can, it's clamped stiff. Uh, this is the liner. And my take on it is that this angle here... Uh, if this is flat here, that's the edge of the uh, liner lock that faces the tang of the blade. My take of it is that it's on too much of this angle. 
and that means this part that's closest to me is what's striking the liner, uh, the tang of the blade, and that's what's causing the rock. I want this farthest edge to be striking that liner, the uh, blade tang first. I want the top edge of this liner lock to be striking the tang of the blade because that's going to hold it at an angle that's going to cause it to be unable to rock back and forth. You know, if it's back here, it can rock and then touch the top. If it's if it's on the other angle, it's going to be uh, give a, a smooth edge. A uh, both sides will be facing. Then both sides will be you know meeting each other flat instead of meeting each other like this. If they meet each other like this, there's some rock can happen. But if they meet each other flat on, they can't rock. That's what I'm going to try to do. I just wonder why Bandit keeps on barking. I'm going to have to go get him. And so what I've done is I've taken my marker, a uh, Sharpie marker, and I've put some ink on the top here so I can see exactly where I'm taking steel off. If I take off too much steel, then I'm going to get really late lock up and nobody wants that. So you really want to make taking, you really want to just take off a tiny, tiny bit and then test and then take off a tiny bit more and then test. And uh, you know what? I think that's enough to do my first test. All right. So I'm going to cut it short there because I think you've seen enough between showing you with a file how to do it manually and showing you how I had it done on my sharpening system. I don't need to show you too much of that because that's actually a complicated setup, how I had to clamp it all together and everything. But those are the two main ways to adjust the liner lock arm. Now, between taking off some of the metal and the liner lock arm to change where the lockup happens, and I did that first, actually. I'm showing you the video in the reverse order of how I did things because the way I'm showing you in the video is the order that you should do it in. I did it backwards. I got lucky <laughs> uh, because when I had that filing done, I still had a very tiny bit of lock, lock rock. Not very much. It was almost all completely gone, but there was a tiny bit left. And it was then that I realized that my lock arm had very little pressure pushing towards the other side of the knife. And that's why I had a little bit of that rocking motion left in it. Your arm needs to hold tightly and you have to have pressure with that lock arm pushing in either frame rock lock or liner lock needs that pressure pushing in to fix the problem. So try it in the order that I showed you in the video. First, see how much pressure there is on your lock arm. Make sure there's enough. If that doesn't fix it after you've made that, then put that Sharpie mark on there. See where your lockup is happening exactly. And if your lockup is happening, you know, down on the pivot end of the locker interface instead of close to the outside edge, then take off a little bit metal on that side there to try to move that interface point closer to the outside edge because that will help you get the, uh, I won't get into all of the uh, geometry on how exactly it all works. It just, trust me, it works better if the lock point is closer to the uh, outside edge than it is when it's further closer to the pivot point. Suffice it to say, this thing works beautifully now. It was great before, the very little rock lock, lock rock. I keep saying it the wrong way around. And, uh, but I wanted to make it perfect. Now it has none and it is awesome. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. You guys make it possible for me to make a lot of my videos. Thank you to everybody who likes, shares, comments, subscribes. If you know somebody who could benefit from this video, share this information with them. Thank you again. And remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye-bye.